How do Persian carpets inspire author Lucy E.M. Blass? Let's find out. But before we do, if you love books and the stories behind them, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Interviews are posted bi-weekly and you don't want to miss them. Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and I'm the host of All About Canadian Books. And I'm very excited because this week my guest is author Lucy E.M. Black. Lucy was formerly an educator. She's a writer, author of award-winning short stories that have been published in Britain, Ireland, the U.S., and Canada. And I love this part. Lucy is also an inveterate eavesdropper who collects stories, voices, and dialects. And she weaves them tenderly into stories so real that we believe we've actually met her characters. Today, we're going to be discussing Lucy's third novel, Stella's Carpet, which is published by Now or Never Publishing and will be released October 16th, Lucy? Yes. So what Stella's Carpet is about, it involves a Holocaust survivor and a woman briefly imprisoned during the Iranian Revolution. They're the main character among the characters. Experiences overlap as individuals step outside the shadow of their own histories and make conscious decisions about how they choose to live while forging new understandings of family forgiveness and reconciliation. Stella's carpet examines the following. How do we survive the unimaginable? How do we live with secrets of our past? And at what price? And you're gonna have to read Stella's carpet to find out what happens. Welcome to All About Canadian Books, Lucy. Welcome back, I should be saying actually. Thank you so much, Crystal. I, I appreciate this opportunity. It's always wonderful to talk to you about books. Oh, thank you, Lucy. Thank you. So I love that. Again, I love this part. As an eavesdropper and the collector of voices and stories, what is the story behind Stella's Carpet? Well, it's... um an interesting book, I think. It has a couple of stories that, that run parallel, if you will. Stella's a high school teacher. Um, she lives in a small town. She teaches in the small town where she was a student. And um, her mother is Polish and uh, her father um, collects Persian carpets. Yeah, Stella's grandparents live in Toronto in the High Park area, the Lipinskis, and they're Polish. And they had a terrible time during the Second World War. Um, her, her mother was imprisoned in a camp. Um, so was her father. And um, they're survivors, but they're quite traumatized by their experiences. And those experiences impacted on Stella's mother while she was growing up. And uh, Stella's mother very much um, resents um, the stories of trauma that she's had to listen to over the years. And um, Pam herself um, feels traumatized by her parents' trauma, if you will. And she's a pretty eccentric, quirky character. And it, it's all about sort of the interplay, if you will, between Pam and the Lipinskis and Stella and the Lipinskis and William. And William falls in love with a woman named Fatima. Mm -hmm. And uh, Fatima is a carpet dealer. And she writes um, articles on the provenance of Persian carpets. And he eventually leaves Pam's mother and starts a new family with Fatima. But despite doing that, he remains very close to the Lipinskis, who he loves. And 
Pam just does not understand this at all. And she really resents the intimacy that he has established with them. Mm -hmm. And Stella is sort of caught in the middle of this strange dynamic. And where the story came from to, to back up a little bit Mm -hmm. is my parents um, were in Europe during the Second World War, Crystal. My father was Polish. Mm -hmm. And um, when Russia invaded Poland at the beginning of the war, he was taken prisoner. And my mother, my mother was actually Dutch, not like Mrs. Lipinski, who is, who is Polish. And, but Holland was just terrible as well. The conditions were terrible in Holland. And I grew up listening to their stories of the war. And fast forward um, to becoming an educator and working in a school where we had a lot of new Canadians. And um, particularly after um, the fall of the Shah, our school was, was flooded with these young people who were traumatized mm -hmm. and their parents were traumatized. And they had all of these incredible overwhelming adjustments to make in terms of fitting into a new school and a new culture and a new community. And I realized as I worked with these young people and their families that their trauma was very similar mm -hmm. to the trauma that my parents talked about after the end of the Second World War. And I began to do a lot of reading on something called intergenerational trauma. Yes. So that um, I could understand um, some of the behaviors that we were observing in the school mm -hmm. and some of the things that I understood in terms of my own experiences um, from having parents who, who had experienced such deep trauma. So Stella's carpet really is, is about Stella navigating all of these things mm -hmm. um, while also um, dealing with family. And, you know, families are messy. <laughs> and <laughs> so uh, it, I think it's, um, it's an interesting book. Um, it's certainly very reflective of my own explorations about some of the subjects. Yes. So Lucy, um, when did you know that you were gonna gonna write about intergenerational trauma? Uh, trauma. Um, when when did inspiration strike? I think it was working with um, the young people that I was dealing with as an educator, and um, just the the clashes in culture that yeah. that were taking place that I didn't understand, um, and being a, a firsthand witness to people removed from my own family and my own experience who were traumatized yes. and thinking about those things and reflecting about those things made me feel that there was an important story there yes. in in terms of what it means to be a Canadian um, I hope you don't think that's crazy but um, Michael and Dotche in The English Patient has four main characters and Pico Ier talks about how those four characters come together and they form a family, they form a community, yeah. even though they're incredibly disparate individuals from, from different places and different life experiences, there is this need to belong. And I, I think that's very reflective of who we are as Canadians. I think that our sense of community, our sense of belonging um, includes um, the families we choose as well as the families we're born into. That really matters to me. I, I think it's important that we talk about those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, now, carpets were, there are an integral part of your novel. And mm -hmm. I loved it because I spent a lot of time on Google um, looking oh, at the, the patterns that you were specifically talking about in the novel. And actually, you're also your website has a fabulous overview of carpet. So um, viewers, you should check it out. But it made me curious, um, what role do Persian carpets play in your life? Well, interesting. Um... My parents were new Canadians and didn't have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. When I was growing up, 
<clears throat> and we had a Persian carpet in our living room, which I think my father picked up second or third hand somewhere. Yeah. And it was a quite worn Persian carpet, but I loved it. Um, as a child, it was my favorite place to play, tracing the patterns. Yeah. And um, it just really intrigued me. So it was very much a part of my um, early childhood um, to have this dominant carpet in the house. And I remember, you know, years later, um, when they, they could afford it, my parents got wall-to-wall -wall broad loom. And, and my father was really excited because <laughs> he felt, you know, that was a really important thing to do for the house. It really meant something. And, and I mourn the loss of this beat-up old Persian carpet. <laughs> and uh, so gradually, uh, you know, my partner and I have been acquiring the odd carpet. And I love them. I, they're just so redolent with story and history. <laughs> I love them too. And your book made me love them even more. <laughs> <laughs> I also really like, Lucy, um, you've got some fabulous book club questions on your website as well. And in particular, the one that kind of drew me in was this one. There are a number of characters in the novel is there one character that you wish you had heard from more often? Now, I know my answer and I don't wanna spoil anything, but I'm, I'd like to flip that around because as a writer, you know, you spend all of your time with these incredible characters. Um, who do you think could be a story all on their own that you would love to spend more time with? Probably Pam. Ah, yeah. <laughs> she is quirky and eccentric and um, dislikable in so many levels. Um, but she and she is also a bit of a survivor. Absolutely. And she evolves during the course of the book, which I think is really interesting. And even as she forges her relationship with Tony, um, she has a very strict moral code in terms of what she will not permit. And, uh, and I don't wanna give the story away, but right. she's very protective of her daughter. Yeah. And um, I admired that about her. And um, I admired her resilience, actually. Mm -hmm. um, she was unhappy. She didn't have models. She read these magazines and followed the advice in these magazines. Yeah. Didn't work for her. Her marriage fell apart. She didn't understand why. Um, but she still was able to move forward. Yeah. And um, I, think that's, I think that's admirable, actually. It, it so is. probably Pam. Oh, okay. <laughs> and what was your answer? Fatima. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. I was yes. I was really intrigued by her. Really intrigued by her. So yeah, but I won't it, give anything away. <laughs> no, but you, you, the thing about Fatima is I wasn't sure I had the right to tell Fatima's story, oh. and I wanted to be very respectful of that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just kind of on a final note with just with Stella, if there's one thing you'd like viewers to know about her before they start the book, what would that be? Or you can say a couple. <laughs> oh. I, I think that um, Stella um, is also a fairly quirky individual. At one point, actually, I wondered if she was even on the spectrum, but she's not. Mm -hmm. um, again, I think that, that Stella is someone who is damaged and she's damaged in part by the intergenerational trauma. Yes. Um, her models also were not healthy, strong models in all instances. And she, was, she tries as best she can um, to navigate um, through these things, but she's painfully shy mm -hmm. and introverted. 
And it's very difficult for her. She has to make a real effort to engage. And um, I've met people like that and um, have a great deal of respect for them. Mm -hmm. So I I think um, I'd want people to know that um, Stella tries really hard to get it right. Yeah. Yeah, she does. I, I, I really liked Stella and her and her whole journey. Yeah. So what are you working on right now? Um, a couple of things. Um, just finished another manuscript called A Quilting of Scars, um, which is um, about um, secrets and um, murder in um, 1909, um, rural um, Ontario. And um, it's an exploration of um, a young man's sexuality and um, his life trajectory Mm -hmm. um, as he reflects back on decisions that he made and secrets that he kept about a murder and a fire that took place in the community. And um, I love the main character. I I think he's um, a really interesting man. And so I'm very happy with that um, manuscript. And I think it's almost ready to go. And um, yeah, the other thing I'm playing with is um, a short story, Mm. which is a long short story um, about elder abuse and um, something that that I think is also worth talking about. because Absolutely. as people age, they become increasingly dependent and increasingly vulnerable. Mm-hmm. And it's um, very easy for people to take advantage of them. Yes. And um, someone in my own experience um, has had a horrific um, experience with elder abuse. And so I want to explore that and um, see if I can give voice to some of the concerns. Mm-hmm. Well, I can't wait for uh, for these ones to come out too. And I also really love how you're fascinated by secrets because that's certainly a big part of Stella's carpet and it looks yes. like your new books that are coming out as well. So that's, I think that's lots of fun too. Lucy, Ian Black, thank you very much for coming on the show today and speaking about your new novel, Stella's Carpet, which will be released October 16th. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me, Crystal. It's been my pleasure. Viewers, I'll put links down below in the description box so you can visit Lucy's website, check out what she's up to, and also pre-order your copy of Stella's Carpet. Thank you so much for watching.